ഹലോ എവറി വൺ വെൽക്കം ടു ദി ചാനൽ കേരള നെസ്സസ് ഹൗ ഇൻ ദിസ് വീഡിയോ വി ആർ ഗോയിങ് ടു ലേൺ അബൌട്ട് ദി വേരിയസ് മെക്കാനിസംസ് ഓഫ് സ്പൈനൽ കോഡ് ഇൻഷുറൻസ് സ്പൈനൽ കോഡ് ഇൻഷുറി ക്യാൻ ബി ഡിഫൈൻ ആസ് എനി ഡാമേജ് ടു എനി പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് ദി സ്പൈനൽ കോഡ് ഓർ ദ നെർസ് അറ്റ് ദ എൻഡ് ഓഫ് ദി സ്പൈനൽ കനാൽ ഓഫൻ കോസസ് പെർമനന്റ് ചേഞ്ചസ് ഇൻ ദ സ്ട്രെങ്ത് സെൻസേഷൻ ആൻഡ് അതർ ബോഡി ഫംഗ്ഷൻസ് ബിലോ ദ സൈറ്റ് ഓഫ് ഇൻഷുറി Let's see the anatomy of the spine. Before understanding the mechanism of spinal cord injury, we should know about the three important ligaments of the spine. They are anterior longitudinal ligament, posterior longitudinal ligament and ligamentum flare. The anterior longitudinal ligament that runs down the anterior surface of the spine. The ligament is thick and slightly more narrow over the vertebral bodies. The posterior longitudinal ligament is situated within the vertebral canal and extends along the posterior surface of the bodies of the vertebrae. And the ligamenta flava, they are the series of ligaments that connect the ventral parts of the laminae of adjacent vertebrae. They mark the elasticity, serve to preserve the upright posture and to assist the vertebral column in resuming it after flexion. Let's see the causes of spinal cord injury. The causes can be because of fall from height road traffic accidents stabbing injuries sports and recreation injuries under the influence of alcohol any act of violence and disease conditions like arthritis and osteoporosis etc the mechanism of spinal cord injury which can be classified in hyperflexion injuries hyperextension injury deformation injury axial loading excessive rotation of the head and body and any kind of penetrating injuries Here you can see hyperextension injury and hyperflexion injury. In hyperextension injury, because of the severe extension of the head or the spinal canal, the posterior ligament is getting damaged. Whereas in hyperflexion injuries, the anterior ligament is getting elongated and ruptured. In deformation injury, due to hyperflexion or hyperextension the anterior longitudinal ligament elongated and the ligamenta flava is compressed and bulged into the spinal canal causing injuries in case of axial loading as well as vertical compression the spinal cord is conduced directly by the retropulsion of the bone or the disc material into the spinal canal in case of penetrating injuries which can cause direct damage to the spinal nerves because of the direct injuries and the pathophysiology of spinal cord injury damage to the spinal cord range from transient concussion from which the patient can fully recover to a contusion laceration and compression of the cord which can happen either alone or in combination and some day this can be lead to the complete transection of the cord which render the patient to paralyzed below the level of injury a secondary chain of events produces ischemia hypoxemia edema and hemorrhagic lesions which can turn results in destruction of the myelin and axons and the secondary reactions are considered as the principal cause of spinal cord degeneration at the level of injury they are reversible 4 to 6 hours after injury therefore if the cord has not suffered severe damage some methods of early treatment is needed to prevent the partial damage from developing total and permanent damage and let's see the management of spinal cord injury first one the pre hospital management the pre hospital management is critical to the patient's ultimate neurological outcome hence every trauma patient must be treated as a spinal cord injury patient which includes the trauma victims whose mental status and cognitive functions are in there advanced trauma life support must be followed in the second one emergency department management a report of the pre hospital management and history of the injury has to be collected and proved transport on a spine board is very common this keep the patient immobilized in a neutral position to prevent further spinal injury the history of accident history of the accident can be obtained from various sources including the patient and a family member information about the circumstances of the injury the neurological status of the patient immediately after injury the treatment at the accident site and the mode of transport is very important at the same time a baseline assessment can be conducted regarding the treatment the treatment has to be initiated fast because hypoxia hypotension and hypertension can contribute to secondary injury and other life threatening complications
Thanks for watching.